It's a minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 1081, Want a Happier Version of You? Avoid the Obligation Creep, by Aileen Massicott of freetopursue.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, and the guy that reads to you every single day of the year from some of the best blogs in the world, all for free, and with permission from the authors. And I'm able to do this thanks to sponsors like Babbel. I think learning another language is such a great skill. You never know when or why you'll use it. And Babbel's lessons are designed to get you speaking confidently in your new language and actually remember what you learn. Go to babbel.com and use the offer code OLD to get 50% off your first three months. That's babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com, offer code OLD for 50% off your first three months. For now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Want a happier version of you? Avoid the obligation creep by Aileen Massicott of freetopursue.com. If you're a regular reader, you might have noticed fewer posts as of late. It's because I've been feeling increasingly overwhelmed and I've chosen to take a step back to reassess what I'm doing. Why? Because my time has started to feel like it's not my own and I have only myself to blame. My latest trip had a powerful effect on me, but the reason it did started long before the trip itself. I was starting to feel lost earlier in the summer, lost in the sheer amount of stuff I'd undertaken, lost in self-imposed obligations that were sucking the life out of me, creativity, clarity, and most importantly, happiness. Most of this feeling of overwhelm came from the need to be quote-unquote productive. I felt I needed to be doing something every single moment of every day, something that I or someone else could measure. And to ensure I was productive, I'd essentially scheduled myself to death. I had far more on my plate than what makes sense for a happy and balanced life. My old thinking had been rearing its ugly head and I started feeling and thinking as I used to a mere 18 months ago when I was part of the corporate machine. I essentially turned what were a number of fun, educational, and or interesting pursuits, including this blog, into a more than full-time job. I needed to do more and fancier stuff, and I was starting to displace activities that bring a great deal of value to my life in favor of what would make me most productive. I'd broken my own rules for happy living, and deep down, I'd known it for a while. How did I go so wrong? After giving it some thought over the last number of weeks, I can narrow it down to a few root causes. I was measuring myself by the amount I produced, turning output into a new measure of stuff, discounting the value of what brings me joy, calling busyness productive, and starting to view pure downtime as laziness. Number one, measuring productivity. I started to feel the need to measure everything from how I spent my time to how many widgets I produced of whatever I was working on. In a way, this measure is not in and of itself a problem, but it is when it isn't tempered by something else. Quality was often compromised for quantity. Number two, output was my new stuff. I started hoarding the volume of stuff I was doing. I kept a mental tally of what I'd done, articles I'd written, books and online resources I'd read, the paperwork I'd processed, the feedback I'd provided, etc. I was replacing my need for material possessions with check marks on a never-ending list. Number three, discounting what brings me joy. All of a sudden, something that felt wonderful but took too much time did not make it into my day, whether it was taking a walk to do my grocery shopping, cooking some of my favorite recipes from scratch, spending an afternoon gardening or walking the dog, spending time with loved ones. Number four, calling busyness productive. I was incessantly checking my smartphone notifications, perusing favorite sites for new information, reading and responding to emails, etc., instead of choosing activity and focusing on that one thing and making it as good as I know I want it to be. The latter is true productivity one can be proud of. The former is just noise that sucks the meaning out of how we spend our time and robs us of being in the moment. Number five, viewing downtime as sheer laziness. I felt the need to be doing something at all times and better yet, I had to be multitasking to feel like I was maximizing every single moment. If I was walking, driving, vacuuming, or gardening, I had to be listening to a podcast. If I was folding laundry or cooking, I had to be listening to or watching a documentary. If I was reading a book, it became more important to read it efficiently 
than to soak in the information or the story and give myself time to think about its meaning and main messages. If I was just choosing to sit and be still, have a cup of coffee, or do something just plain fun, a weird anxiety would wash over me to get up and do more, more, more. When I compare my quality of life now to what I discovered as a new balance last summer, I've lost significant ground. And the worst part? There was no winner in this game because I may have produced more, but it was often inferior to what could have come from doing less but more thoughtfully and completely. It left me feeling empty, like I somehow wasted many opportunities to make my life happier and richer. I'm grateful that I've become aware of my creeping bad habits and destructive beliefs and that I'm doing something about it. I'm refocusing on allowing myself to be the best version of me that I can be one moment at a time. But this better version won't be measured by my output of volume. It'll be measured by how I feel about what I'm doing and whether it adds value to my life. The winners, loved ones, a healthy mind and body, quality writing, being of service to others, fun times, and creating lasting memories by seeking out and living unique experiences. You just listened to the post titled, Want a Happier Version of You? Avoid the Obligation Creep by Aileen Massicott of freetopursue.com. She has really great book reviews. If you're interested in reading something, check out her reading list and book reviews. They're worth looking into. That's all at freetopursue.com. And thank you again to Babbel for their support. You can learn Spanish, Italian, German, French, Swedish, Russian, and more. And using Babbel, you can be speaking your new language within weeks. Babbel's 10 to 15 minute lessons are available anytime, anywhere on your desktop, smartphone, or tablet. And your progress is synced across devices. So you can always pick up right where you left off. Super convenient. And Babbel's lessons are crafted by language experts and voiced by native speakers. It helps you get ready for being out there in the world. You get ready for all kinds of practical situations like chatting with new friends, ordering food or asking for directions, all that kind of stuff and more. So go to babbel.com and use the offer code OLD to get 50% off your first three months. That's babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Offer code is OLD for 50% off your first three months. I'll leave it there for today. Hope you're having a great start to your week if you're listening in real time. And I'll be back tomorrow reading to you where your optimal life awaits.